Today's episode of Science Get is special, not only because we'll be talking about the awesome power of a potentially newly born magnetar, but also because it's the first episode of the year. Thanks to the fact that the holidays were absolutely insane, this is going to serve as our obligatory holiday episode. And hey, why not? There are traditionally 12 days of Christmas, 8 days of Hanukkah, etc, etc. So why not blow right past all that and release one in the middle of January? So, Happy Christmas, Merry Holidays, and Happy New Year from myself and my wife, because I am mostly a one-man army. Mostly. Speaking of Christmas, do you like Christmas lights? Well, there's probably no greater Christmas light show in the universe than the explosion of energy released by a pair of neutron stars colliding and forming a freaking magnetar. I know, nice segue, right? And astronomers think they just spotted one. So, let's jump in. But first, do all the things like comment, subscribe, join the mailing list, etc. I am Eric Malachite, author of a bunch of books, and this is Science Get. On May 22nd of last year, NASA's Neil Garrell Swift Observatory picked up a burst of gamma ray light along its orbital path around the Earth. Upon further investigation in the X-ray and infrared wavelengths, the culprit was discovered to be none other than a kilonova. Now, we've definitely talked about kilonova in the past, and while recently there has been some discourse suggesting that most gamma ray bursts are the result of plain old supernova explosions, it is still thought that sometimes, when two neutron stars collide, they produce a magnetar. Listen, kids. But two neutron stars love each other very much. They, however, more often than not, theories suggest that they produce a black hole instead. Now, and this fact might surprise you, but only one flash of light in the history of astronomy has ever been classified as a kilonova. But if an upcoming issue of the Astrophysical Journal has anything to say about it, this intense explosion of light and energy was produced by two neutron stars merging together. The real question is, did they produce a magnetar? Well, you know what they say about wishing, right? Wish in one hand and... yeah. As mentioned earlier, sometimes when neutron stars collide and merge, they can form a black hole rather than a magnetar. In fact, the formation of a magnetar is extremely freaking rare. It was May 22nd when Wen Fei Fong, an astrophysicist at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, and their colleagues first laid eyes on the suspected kilonova. From there, the team analyzed X-ray and infrared data from the burst of light and confirmed that the gamma rays that were being emitted from the object were consistent with the telltale glow of a kilonova. Remember how I mentioned that there has only been one confirmed kilonova? Well, the explosion of light and energy that Fong and her team analyzed absolutely crushes that one. In fact, this explosion was nearly 10 times brighter in the infrared spectrum than any neutron star merger previously observed. But is it over 9,000? When Fong was interviewed by ScienceNews.org, she had this to say about the development. That was the real eye-opening moment, and that's when we scrambled to find an explanation. We had to come up with an extra source of energy that was boosting that kilonova. And what is her explanation? Well, there are many possibilities, but Fong's favorite, or at least the one she hopes is true, is that the intensity of the kilonova was caused by the formation of a magnetar. Those of you who are new to the channel might not remember our original video series on neutron stars, so you may not know that magnetars are some of the most terrifying objects in the known universe. They exhibit magnetic fields about 1,000 trillion times more powerful than Earth's. That's one quadrillion Gauss. Compare this to Earth's magnetic field, which clocks in at 0.25 to 0.65 Gauss, and yeah. Now you're playing with power. They're so powerful, in fact, that they could literally cause atoms to get stretched to pencil-thin rods, disturb normal molecular chemistry, and break down covalent bonds. If you were to put yourself anywhere within 1,000 kilometers of one of these nightmare objects, the normal bioelectricity of your body would just stop functioning, and the molecules making up your body would simply dissolve until there was nothing left. Oh, I don't feel so good, Mr. Magnetar. But what about the other explanations, and what is the actual likelihood that this thing is actually a magnetar? Most often, when two neutron stars merge, they don't create a magnetar. No, the merger of two of these stellar corpses produces an object that is far too large to exist. 
and will pretty much collapse under the force of its own gravity shortly after the merger is complete. Upon collapse, the merged object becomes a black hole, which is exactly what is about to happen with Disney. In order to actually form a magnetar, the two neutron stars hoping to form a newborn magnetar need to have two important properties. They have to be spinning super fast, and they have to have extremely powerful magnetic fields. If the merged object is spinning fast enough and has an extremely powerful magnetic field, like what I just described to you in the previous section, then it might just have a chance at not collapsing into a black hole. But, unfortunately, it's possible that the extra power source adding to this kilonova's brightness could have originated from the black hole erupting to quote-unquote life with a gamma-ray burst, a phenomenon that is also known in black holes to be called relativistic jets. Relativistic jets are another thing we've talked about on the channel before, like a lot. But since it's a new year, we'll go ahead and break down what they are again, especially because my older videos aren't nearly as clean as the new ones. You're welcome. These jets of radiation are most commonly spotted at the centers of active galaxies, like the Centaurus A radio galaxy. These jets can absolutely dwarf the light of their host galaxy, and in some cases, their presence can even spell certain doom for that galaxy. That's because relativistic jets can cause a galaxy to artificially age. Not only that, but these jet streams of particles and radiation can span immense distances, sometimes dwarfing the galaxy's size and traveling light years and light years of distance. They get their name from the fact that they travel at relativistic speeds, sometimes nearing the speed of light. But it's not just supermassive black holes that can erupt in relativistic jets. Even smaller ones can produce emissions like this. So, if the extra oomph behind the kilonova that Fong and her team witnessed on May 22nd of last year came from the birth cry of a black hole, that actually makes a lot of sense. But continuing her comments to sciencenews.org, she went on to state that if it was a magnetar that was formed, that could tell us something about the stability of neutron stars and how massive they can get. We don't know the maximum mass of neutron stars, but we do know that in most cases they would collapse into a black hole after a merger. If a neutron star did survive, it tells us about under what conditions a neutron star can exist. However, while Fong seems to be pretty fixated on the possibility that this merger resulted in a magnetar, astrophysicist Om Sharan Salafia isn't. Salafia is affiliated with Italy's National Institute for Astrophysics in Marait, but when sciencenews.org interviewed him, he said that finding a baby magnetar would be exciting. A newborn, highly magnetized, highly rotating neutron star that forms from the merger of two neutron stars has never been observed before. So there appears to be two possibilities here. Which camp do you fall into? Do you think this merger resulted in the formation of a magnetar or a black hole? Answer me in the comments. While Fong admits to ScienceNews.org that this matter is far from settled, she's going to keep watching this object until she's old and gray, and she's going to teach each and every one of her students to watch it as well. Hopefully, through that effort, we'll have an answer someday. That's all I've got for you today, but be sure to do all the things. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with someone who loves science, and if you dig neutron stars, check out this video on the sheer terrifying power of magnetars. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. Until next time, I'm Eric Malachite. Happy New Year. It's good to be back.